Hi, welcome to Ellis Library, the main library on the MU campus. We're located in the heart of campus, right between Jesse Hall and Memorial Union. Our hours are 24-5, which just means we're open 24 hours a day, almost every day of the semester, but we do close on Friday and Saturday evenings. Let's take a tour of Ellis Library and I'll show you a little bit more about the resources that we have to offer. Right now, we're just outside of the north entrance off of Lowry Mall, but we're gonna start our tour at the west entrance. I'll meet you there. Throughout this tour, we'll jump back to maps and floor plans of the library. This is a map of the first floor. There are two main entrances into Ellis Library, the north entrance where we just were, and the west entrance, or the library's accessible entrance. Rounding the northwest corner of the library, there's a space that is often easy to miss, Ellis Auditorium. Ellis Auditorium is a classroom used for many different programs across campus. It can be a confusing space to find because typically we think of it being an Ellis Library. But while it is in the library building, it is not accessible from the actual library. To get access, all you have to do is come to the west side of Ellis Library and enter through these doors. If we keep heading south, after passing Ellis Auditorium, we'll find ourselves between Ellis Library and Speaker Circle. This is where the west entrance of Ellis Library is located. The west entrance is Ellis Library's accessible entrance. Through these doors is the ground floor of Ellis Library. Let's head inside. After walking in the library and passing the staircase, we come to this cafe. This is a great place to study, to grab a coffee or a treat. But just remember that the hours for the cafe are not always the same as the library hours. So you can check out the hours for the cafe on our library website. Down this hallway, we have elevators and restrooms and a little further down the entrance to the Museum of Art and Archaeology. The Museum of Art and Archaeology's hours also differ, so be sure to check that out as well. After exiting the elevator or from the top of the stairs, we are between two computer labs called the Information Commons. These have both Macs and PCs, and to use them, you just log in with your regular campus username and password. There are also several banks of printers, including one color printer available for student use if you have the printing plan set up through the Department of IT or Do It. A student worker from Do It is often available at a desk in Information Commons 2 to assist with any technology issues or printing questions you might have. Information Commons 2 also houses two book scanners that can send scanned images straight to your email. Information Commons 1 is also where you can meet with a writing tutor. To sign up for an appointment with a writing tutor, visit the Writing Center's website. Whether you're looking for creative ideas for your classes or you have a personal creative project, the Digital Mode Media and Innovation Lab is here for you. They have podcast equipment, animation software, and a film studio on the third floor. If you need help with any of these tools, you can schedule an appointment to get support. Making our way through Information Commons 1, we pass other resources like the guest access computers that do not require a login and the interfaith meditation and prayer space. Next to Information Commons 2, we have government documents. This collection houses bills, congressional records, public laws, and a lot more. But it also houses things from parks and recreation, textile information, military information, and almost anything that you can think of. You might be surprised how well this collection can support your academic research. If we walk back towards the balcony, we find the colonnade, which is a wide hallway with book displays, large cast sculptures, the north entrance, and the checkout and information desk. The colonnade is home to the Ask Here or the Peer Navigator desk. This is a space where you can ask a student worker any questions you might have about the library or its resources. If the question is a little more advanced, they'll refer you to a reference librarian who can help you find answers to your scholarly research questions. You can also get research assistance online via chat almost 24 seven. Just a little further down the hallway, we reach the checkout and information desk. This is also sometimes known as the circulation desk. 
This is another great place for you to ask your questions, but it's also the place where you can check out materials. What do I mean by materials? Well, that can mean books, but it can also mean things like phone chargers, flash drives, and even umbrellas. All you need to do to check out a book from here is bring your student ID card. It works just like a library card. Sometimes your professors will also let you know that they've placed materials here on reserve. Those materials can also be checked out from the checkout and information desk. We'll look at some study rooms on the third floor, but I want to mention the Ellis Library does have a few reservable rooms on the first floor as well as a few open study areas like 114 and 115. Looking on the map, we notice some areas are labeled quiet study. These areas tend to be low to no talking areas because the students using them choose to make it quieter. The large blue areas are restrooms and the green areas are stairs or elevators. Because the library was built in several editions, there are a few half floors that make finding our way a bit confusing. Let's take a moment to talk about navigating using the elevators. The north elevators can be entered from both the north and south sides. Because of that, you'll see buttons G, 1, 2, and 3, as well as 1R, 2R, 3R, and 4R. The R stands for rear, meaning it opens up to the south side of the library or the side closest to the student center. Let's take the elevator up to the second floor. I want to exit the elevator to the north, so I'll press 2 and see you there. Arriving on the second floor, we'll take a left to visit another quiet study space. The second floor has two large rooms for open study. The first one will pass, room 202, has large tables with outlets and lamps, and there are a few standing desks in the room as well. The Cast Gallery is a collaboration project between ME Libraries, the Museum of Art and Archaeology, and the School of Visual Studies. This space is on the northwest corner of the library and is located between room 202, and the Grand Reading Room. The Grand Reading Room is the quietest space in the library, and many people claim it as their favorite space in the library as well. Right across from the Grand Reading Room is classroom 213. This is the space that we typically use for any of our library instruction. So if you have a class that your teacher says you're meeting here in the library for classroom instruction, you'll probably be meeting here in 213. The rest of the second floor houses study rooms and stacks or bookshelves. However, you will also find an all-gender restroom and a lactation room. The third floor resembles the second floor with a balcony view of the grand reading room, stacks, and study spaces. As I mentioned on the first floor, there are lots of study rooms throughout the library. Some of them are smaller and only fit maybe one or two people, but some of them are larger and can fit up to 20. Study rooms might have adjustable desks, whiteboards, or TV monitors you can connect your computers to. Along the perimeter of the library and throughout the stacks, you'll also find study desks for individual study as well. The University of Missouri Libraries uses the Library of Congress call number system to organize our books. You'll see call numbers on the outside of the shelves, as well as some wayfinding tools here. You can also find more tools and support on our library website. If you don't want to come up into the stacks to find your own book, you can use our shelf retrieval service, which allows you to reserve a book and a librarian will pull it for you. You can pick it up at the circulation desk or any of our pickup lockers or at any other library on the MU campus. When visiting special collections and archives, which are located on the fourth floor, you will need to use the stairs or lift from the third floor. If you have issues finding or accessing special collections and archives, please do not hesitate to ask for help. You may also find helpful information in the Services for Persons with Disabilities webpage. To visit the east side of the fourth floor, you can take the stairs or elevator. To avoid stairs, you'll want to use elevator button 4R. Fourth East has more bookshelves and study rooms and study spaces like this one, which we call the Nook. It also has this open computer lab that sometimes gets used as a classroom. If that space is reserved for a class, you'll see a note posted on the door. And with that, we've seen most of Ellis Library, a great place to study, 
to borrow a phone charger, to quickly print a paper, and of course, to get the tools you need to do your best at the University of Missouri. We hope to see you here at Ellis soon.